Good day. It is so absolutely glorious during this spring. We've had so much rain, and I hope that you have a beautiful spring as well. As I welcome you to Broadmoor Community Church, I want you to know that this is a church that believes very strongly that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And I am privileged to be the senior pastor at this place. My name is Ann Cubbage. And anytime you want to get a hold of me, feel free to send me an email or call the church. My email is acubbage at broadmoorchurch.org. And the phone number is 719-473-1807. As we come into this time of worship, I don't know where you find yourself. Are you in the car? Taking a vacation? Are you on a trail or a hike? Are you sitting on your couch, just enjoying some time away? I don't know where you are, but I know that God is with you. I know that you are surrounded by God's love. I know that you are a welcome and important part of this congregation. I would invite you to check out the slides that run at the end of the service. There are several that talk about camps, about small groups, about prayer requests, which I take so seriously. And I hope that you will consider coming to meet us sometime. We are here in the office Monday to Thursday, but we worship outside at 9.30 a.m. each and every Sunday. And now I invite you to take a deep breath in and to let it out as we go into worship. If you have not yet prepared your communion elements of juice or wine and bread, please do so. We'll be here waiting for you. God bless you. Hi everyone, it's Miss Liz. How are you today? It's so good to see you. Thanks as always for watching. So my friends, did you know that God is with you? It's true. God's spirit is always with us. God is so close to us at all times and Sometimes, if we can remember that God is with us, it can affect how we act and how we behave. For example, if you remember that God is with you, it may help you to be loving and kind towards other people that you come in contact with. If you remember that God is with you, it might help you 
not be unkind to people that you come in contact with, to people that are hard to love. Remembering that God is with you might help you be loving towards those people. So this week, I want you to remember that God is with you. God is with you always. And I want you to see how that affects how you behave. Will you do that? Let's say a prayer. We'll ask God for help. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your love. Help me remember that you are with me always. When I remember that you are with me, let it affect how I behave. Help me to be loving and kind towards other people. Thank you, God. We love you. Amen. All right, my friends, go out remembering that God is with you. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea in the west, shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall lead this people to possess the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We have just gone through a season of endings. The end of the school year, the end of college education, the end of a job or the end of a life. We understand endings and recognize the rituals around those endings. And what are those rituals about anyway? They are about remembering. Remembering the good days of high school or successful projects with friends and colleagues. Remembering lives well lived. Remembering the hopes, the dreams, the promises of the past that will carry us into the next adventure or experience of life. That is what we hear in our scripture today. Moses, the deliverer from Egypt, the leader of the wandering Hebrews, has died. And God speaks to Joshua, telling him that in this ending, there is a new beginning. This new beginning is the fulfillment of the promises given years before to Moses. Joshua is commissioned to do something amazing and frightening, but so very important. Under Joshua's leadership, the people will cross into the promised land, but he is to remember 
to remember all the law, to meditate upon it day and night, to act upon it. He is to be strong and courageous, not to be frightened or dismayed, which of course tells him that life will not always be rosy. Joshua is to remember that just as God was with Moses, God will be with him wherever he goes. And that, my friends, is a promise. And then we hear from the Gospel of Matthew. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Matthew writes at the end of his gospel about Jesus' culminating injunction to the disciples. Jesus has finished his life. He has died and risen again. He has completed his resurrection appearances. And he is commissioning these men to do something amazing and frightening and so very important. Knowing the human propensity for avoiding difficult situations, understanding the human tendency for falling back into old patterns and ways of life, realizing how needy the disciples and all of us might be in order to consider God's future on this earth, Jesus says, remember. Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This promise calls for a certain kind of behavior from us. What will we do? What will we say if we truly believe those words, I am with you always? Making disciples and baptizing are not just apostolic acts or evangelical events. They are ways by which the kingdom of heaven happens. Because happenstance is not how the kingdom works. If we claim, I am with you always as true, that should make a significant difference as to how we are in our world. How will we be with each other if we believe God is here? How will we act toward each other if we believe God is with us? How will we speak about each other if we believe God is among us? If God is with us, how will we treat the stranger, the sojourner, the ex-con, the homeless, the addict? If we believe God is with us, how will we speak out for the trans man or woman, the brown and the black, or the children who find themselves in untenable situations because of life circumstances, caught between autocratic, powerful people who don't know them or their situations, but who nonetheless think they know exactly how to legislate proper behavior, proper thought, or proper actions. And on the other side, parents who are doing their best by attempting to love their children. We are living in a time when decisions and actions and speech demonstrate indifference to God's presence, even a disbelief that God is in the midst of all that we do. Much more is at stake with the assertion of I am with you always. Then what would Jesus do? What we do is no mere imitation of Jesus' actions, but comes with the recognition that Jesus' actions were premised upon God's presence and brought about God's presence. And for that matter, how will we care for God's creation if we believe God is beside us in the garden, as we splash in the waters, as we hike the great mountains? How will we tend to this earth that has been entrusted to us if we believe we can feel God's tears as God watches our apathy for the earth. Two scriptures, two scriptures that promise God's presence through trials and troubles. One from the great God Almighty, creator to Joshua, and one from Jesus to us, his disciples. 
How can it come from two different sources? Or maybe it's only one. Can we even trust this promise? Perhaps we are speaking of the very being of God, the creator. God as seen in the man who walked the earth 2,000 years ago. God who will be with us always. Perhaps this promise of God's presence is what guides and encourages, no matter where you might find yourself. Paul certainly understood this. Paul's last proclamation for the Corinthians is simply the promise of God's ongoing presence in and for the sake of the Corinthian community. He writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. There it is. That promise again. That promise of God's presence. If this promise is genuine, which I believe it is, then what would our ministry look like? What would our lives look like? What would our way of being look like, our congregations look like, if what we did and said began with, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit? Hmm. This petition might make us pause and question whether what we are about to do is truly in the name of our God. The experience might be completely different if there's an expectation that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are actually in the room. Or the words, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, might give us the strength, the power to risk, to take a chance on an action, knowing that God's promises will always be fulfilled and God promises to be there. If we were to grant that I am with you always is a summary of the Trinity, God's presence itself, then maybe the Trinity would not be an irrelevant belief of the church, but rather the belief about God without which the church could not be the church. Without the presence of God in whatever form you understand it, we devolve into a social group intent upon maintaining the status quo, focused upon preserving our buildings and our worship structures. Without the presence of God, we forget. Life becomes all about us. Without the presence of God, why even make disciples? No one would be interested in remembering anyway. Without the presence of God, Love would not have the power to change our world. These passages remind us that in the end, we remember. And now may the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you now and forever to the end of the age. Amen. Jesus Christ, be thy
And now we come to the sacrament of Holy Communion. If you have juice or crackers or something, turn off this video for just a minute. Go get your supplies. We'll wait. And on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he sat around table with his friends. And he took that Passover meal and he turned it into something that we today remember, remember, remember Jesus' gift to us, God's love through Jesus. On that night, he sat around the table with his friends and he took the bread, the bread that they'd all been eating, and he broke it after blessing it, and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And because it was a Passover meal, at the end of the table was a space for Elijah. Elijah, that would be and return and show that the new covenant was coming and Jesus took the cup and after blessing it, he said this, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, remember me. And so we come to this table knowing that we will never deserve it. But because of God's grace, all has been forgiven. God's mercy and grace have been poured out on us. And we come to be filled so that we can go out into the world and share God's love and mercy and forgiveness in all of our actions and in all that we do. So I invite you to take a piece of the bread or eat the whole thing. Here at this church, what we do is we dip it into the cup. You may drink the whole thing, knowing that every time you eat it and every time you drink it, you remember the love of God through Jesus Christ. These are the foods for all of God's people. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And now, may the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you, now and forever. Amen.